Let's bring in Susan Slusser, <laughs> who joins us right now from the San Francisco Chronicle. Susan, great to see you. And how is life in the Bay Area lately, baseball-wise? Uh, well, it's very interesting. Um, technically, I'm in Milwaukee right now with the Giants, but um, beautiful Milwaukee. Are you um, in the Fister? At, Wait, did you see ghosts? No, that's not the Fister. I, I know, I but tell. I am not in the Fister. I am. Uh, <laughs> I am elsewhere. But uh, I, I love a good ghost in a hotel, really? so I'm I'm very pro pro hotel ghost. Uh, we love <laughs> AJ in the Bay Area. He knows it. <laughs> well, Susan was always um, nice to me. So mm-hmm. I appreciate. I, always I think we had our I moments, AJ. Yes, it's oh, wait, 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 I appreciate. I, we've, had this con- her, we've had this conversation in person, and I always told her she wrote some stuff about me. But I always appreciated the fact she was a professional about it. She would show up and she would talk to me before she would write the article. And that's all you ask as a player: you come to me, you write whatever you want, but at least give me a chance to respond. And Susan was always great about it. She would. She's not one of those people that writes the article and hides. She'd come up and. I have nothing but respect for Susan. Susan, your thoughts? I always love somebody that speaks their mind, and AJ always spoke his mind, which is perfect. Yeah. You knew you'd get an opinion. So, but some of those, you had some rivalries with some of those A's teams I covered. So, well, exactly. that was entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Of course. But that's what it's about. That's all yes. it's all about. Yes. We, I mean, we saw, we saw Marcus Stroman give the, and you guys were saying it was too much. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. <laughs> okay, it's like, more yeah. personality. We need more personality in the game. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. I know AJ's been excited to ask you like a very simple I only have question. One, I only have one question for you, Susan, since you're... Yeah. No, you don't. You have more, but well, this but is the, a big To start, because you were the A's beat reporter for years when I played. 10 and 41. Yep. Go. Woof. Uh, I mean... I, I can't see how they don't lose uh, 110, you know? It's it's ugly. The the fact that they've shed like any almost any name there. I feel I feel so bad for Mark Kotze. He knew you know the direction they were headed when he took that job, but I don't think he could have imagined kind of the depths that they're they're going to reach, you know, with um yeah, you know, a, a majority of their players are not quite big league ready. It's it's just sad. And then there's no fans in the stands. They've been chased away by ownership, uh, constantly disparaging the ballpark, the fans, you know, re- outright insulting the fans at times. It's it's just uh, awful. It's really, it, may, it kind of heart, breaks my heart for everybody how many games, still there. How many, yeah. Yeah, you know, I love Kotze. He was a great teammate and I feel terrible for him too. How, how many do you think they lose this year? 120? I think they break the all-time record. Not. Do you think they break the all-time record this year? They have 10 wins. We're 50 games. We're a third of the way, just about. And they have 10. I, I can't discount the possibility. I really can't. It's uh, it's pathetic. Uh, and they'll probably trade more or get rid of more or do something else. I mean, I, I and this isn't the front office is doing. This is ownership. You know, David Forst, Billy Bean, obviously, they're some of the best in the business. And they want to win. That is a competitive front office. So I feel bad for them, too. What a terrible situation. Ugh. Hello, Susan. How are you? How are you doing this lovely evening? I am great. I am happy to be in Milwaukee. Yes. (laughs) Nice. Uh, I've been there a lot. Old stomping grounds. (laughs) Um, Just a quick question. What is the reasoning behind the the A's uh, ticket sales, the raising prices? Uh, That is such a great question. I mean, it's not just that they raised the prices... Uh, including for their uh, season ticket holders, which they didn't have that many of to begin with, they did stuff like they took away all their amenities at the same time. They took away their parking, they took away their uh, discount on concessions and merch and all of those kinds of things. Like that is a slap in the face. Why, why would you do that? Especially at the same time you're trading away anybody that has any name recognition. I, uh, I can only come to the conclusion they are actively trying to drive away their fans which is what's happened. So, yay. Uh, I mean, if that's, I don't know why anybody would do that, whether they're trying to move or not. It just doesn't make any business sense at all. And it's horrible to do to your longtime fans. I mean, you guys know it's a small fan base, but they are a good fan base. They're um, so dedicated. They're so smart. They're so fun. I mean, everyone knows about the drums and the guys in the, in right field. It's, uh, I, it just makes me so sad. I grew up watching games there when I was a kid. Used to be a beautiful ballpark. You guys are all too young to remember it. But it was gorgeous before they built, you know, Mount Davis out there for the Raiders. It was really a nice multi-purpose ballpark. And they ruined it. 
and now it is it really is the mausoleum it's awful did, and you don't have to have an answer if they didn't say anything because i know i mean obviously the owner hides behind um the president but did they ever say anything about that like hey we're charging more because payroll's down and we're trying to leave like what do they say to that I think that their standard answer has been that they didn't raise prices for a few year, few years. Now, some of that was, you know, coming out of the pandemic when nobody was really able to do that. Uh, and uh, they had a few years ago that really interesting um, sort of season long pass. You could get certain number of seats, but then you could go into any game during the year, standing room only, like basically in the bars and stuff in the, the Coliseum. Apparently they actually wound up kind of losing money on some of that. And I think that's some of their reasoning too. But this is this is not the time to be driving away your fans. I just don't, I don't get it. I, I, can you imagine being an Oakland A's fan right now? It's I, like, why, why would you be? We, we try and be there for them in, in, in every aspect possible, bringing on for, uh, current, but also former A's and actually getting like real questions and answers out of them about what they're dealing with, or even former players like Chris Bassett has talked to us about like the text group that he's in with all these talented A's that they've traded away. So what I wanted to ask you about on that front is Sean Murphy. This is a young guy, had team control left, and I know they were emptying the cupboard, but it's not like he was super expensive. And clearly he looks like a superstar. Oh, so yeah. he goes to Atlanta before even playing a game, signed six years, 73 million guaranteed. And I know he can make a little more if they pick up that club option. That would make it 788. Could they not have done that? And if they did, do you think he would have accepted it? I mean, you could say this about almost all of these guys that they've let go or traded. I mean, the first indications they were in trouble, as far as I was concerned, was when they didn't even give Marcus Simeon a qualifying offer. Are you kidding me? He's a Bay Area guy. They're shortstop, steadiest person on the team, team leader, no qualifying offer. Uh, I mean, he probably would have left, and then you get the pick. They, they wouldn't even risk that. Terrible. Um, but yeah, Sean Murphy is, I mean, they knew what they had. Again, this is not the front office. This is straight from ownership. They absolutely knew what they had, but ownership's not going to give that kind of money. Like, how are they spending money? They're not spending money on anything, even the ballpark right now, and it's it's crumbling. 